Hallelujah. Um, glory to God for the opportunity. Um, you know, preaching the gospel is it's, uh, it's an election of grace. Uh, the people that stand in this holy, sacred desk are not better than anybody. It's just an election of grace. Paul, Paul Peter was writing, he said, he said, we who have not obtained mercy, we have not obtained mercy. So I'd like for you to open your heart and trust that God will minister to you this morning. I thank God's servant, our pastor, and our mama for the opportunity as well. Don't mind me. My mind is in the message. Hallelujah. Let's turn to Genesis chapter 1. We're going to continue our conversation on the fundamentals of purpose. We started sometimes in the month of January, and um, God showed us mercy. So we want to build on that. It's supposed to be about a four-part um, teaching series, but today we are in the part two fundamentals of purpose. Our key test is Genesis chapter 1 and the 26th verse. And God said, please, can you give me in the KJV translation, sir? Thank you. He said, and God said, Let us make man in our image. I want you to notice that the project that God has, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that's why he said, let us, the three person in the Godhead, the project is the making of man. Let's keep that in mind. And the making of man we learned in our first series is in three parts. Number one is the creation. Genesis the Bible says, not now, sir, later, just sit there. <laughs> the Bible says, God said, uh, let us, if you read verse 27, give, give me verse 27. You are still coming back to verse 26. Multimedia, walk with speed with me. There is a lot this morning. Um, we are not going to finish the module this morning. I'm aware about that. I'm just going to emphasize what the Spirit of God wants me to emphasize but I'm going to share with the church all that the Lord has given me so that we'll become like the Berean Christians. The expectation is that you go back to see and to study what the Lord is saying. So the first stage is the creation of man. So God created man. The word create there is the word bara. It means to produce something, give me the scripture, out of non-existing material. The second phase is the formation. Give me Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7 very quickly. And so the Lord God, Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7 or verse 8. So the Lord God formed man. So the Lord God formed man. The first one was the work of the father. While the second one was principally the assignment of the son. He was doing modeling. The third one is supposed to be the assignment of the Holy Spirit, the making. You know, it was Job that caught that mystery in Job 33 and verse 4, or verse, chapter 33 and verse 4. He said, the Spirit of the Lord God had made me, and the bread of the Almighty had given me life. If you were in the first season, if you were in the first series, I think we've already covered all that. Give me Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. Let's try to run. <laughs> Hallelujah. Tell somebody I will fulfill God's purpose for my life. Can you help me preach to somebody I will fulfill God's purpose for my life? And God said, let us make man in our image. It means you are supposed to resemble God and after our likeness, you are supposed to act like God. You are supposed to act like God. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fire of the air, and over the cattle. KJV translation. And over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. You know, the first time man is used, we saw it there in the New Testament in generic term, is the word anthropos. What it means, the, the one that is created to look up and to depend on God. 
There's something called biblical hermeneutics. And biblical hermeneutics is the interpretation of scripture where God used uh, numbers in a systemic way to pass definite truths. God is using numbers in scriptures to pass definite truths. For example, one is unity. Two is the double or diversity. Three is the number of completion. You see this pattern in scripture. Four is the number of the arts. Because the sun and the moon were created on the fourth day. And there are four aspects of the earth. The north, the south, the east, and the west. Five is grace. Six is the number of man. Adam was created in the sixth day. That's why after the rapture, the mark of the beast is going to be 6666. Six, six, six. Talking about the confirmation. Seven is the number of perfection. Eight is Christ. The ark, the new beginning. Nine is harvest and fruitfulness. Ten is completion. And that's why ten does not belong to you. The ten part belongs to God as your tithe. Twelve is the number of government. Forty in scripture, you see a lot of forty in scripture. Is a number of probation. Is a number of probation. And so God began to use these numbers to be able to pass definite truth to us. That's why there are basically four fundamentals of purpose. And I just want to list them very quickly as we run. Please, let's go back to the slide, ma'am or sas. Hallelujah. Four fundamentals of purpose. Number one is the discovery of purpose. I was mindful to use the word discovering because it's an ongoing process. Number two, fundamentals of purpose is the developing of purpose. That's what I'm going to be talking on this morning. We did the first part, the discovering in the first part. And the third part is the deploying of purpose. And why the last part is the divinity of purpose. Jesus Christ being our case study discovered his purpose. He said, for this purpose was I born, and for this purpose came I into the world. In Matthew, please, um, Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, it says, He shall bring forth his son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, and he shall save his people from their sin. So Jesus Christ, who is a pattern man, as a man discovered his own purpose. His purpose was to go and satisfy the claim of divine justice. He was supposed to perform the salvific work so that you and me can be redeemed and have eternal life. He discovered his purpose. But as a man, Jesus Christ developed in his purpose. Luke chapter 2 and verse 52, the Bible says, An increase in wisdom and in stature, and he was in favor with God and, and man. But apart from him developing his purpose, Jesus Christ also deployed his purpose. At chapter 10 and verse 38, how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and power. He went about doing good and healing all that were sick and oppressed of the devil because God is with him. You see, whenever you are deploying your purpose, it means, among other things, you are, you are serving your purpose to the, Abbas, the, the, the several mountains of culture. The Bible says, and David, after he served his own generation by the will of God, he fell asleep. When we are talking about purpose, we are not referring to only your purpose in church. Some of us are called to government, the Daniels of this world. Some of us are called to entertainment. Some of us are called to sports. Some of us are called to politics. Some of us are called to education. So that is what we'll be discussing in the, um, the third section. So today, let's go back to the slide. I, I just want to see, I want to talk to us on how we can develop our purpose. And I want you to do something for me. Can you close your eyes and pray for yourself for one minute? I'm going to be saying some things very fast. And I want you to ask God's Father, open my spirit to receive. Just pray for yourself, please. Sally Adeli, grant me spiritual understanding. Grant me spiritual understanding. Grant me spiritual understanding. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's go to a, a 
Ecclesiastes chapter 9, and let's begin. How can we develop our purpose? Ecclesiastes chapter 9, I'll be reading the 11th verse. Hallelujah. Tell somebody, hallelujah. hallelujah. You know, hallelujah is a shout of victory. Now, we know that the writer of, of Ecclesiastes is Solomon. And Solomon wrote, um, or he was a contributor to at least not less than three, three books in scripture. Number one, he wrote the book of Songs of Solomon, greater part of Songs of Solomon. Uh, lots of books in the book of, lots of chapters in the book of Proverbs, and also the book of Ecclesiastes. When he was writing the Songs of Solomon, he was a young man in his youth looking for a girlfriend. And that's why you see all those uh, romantic words, my beloved. And so a brother is laughing. Maybe that was what you use for your wife. Glory to God. So as a young man, he was writing from that dimension. In the book of Proverbs, he was already an, he was already a father. And he was writing, my son, my son, writing as a father. In the book of Ecclesiastes, he was already an older man. That's why he said, because he, he, was, he has calculated, or he has seen all the mistakes he had made. He has learned from his experiences. He has learned from his dealings with God. He has seen how he has fallen, how he has risen. And it's out of that experience he was writing the book of Ecclesiastes. That's why he was counseling the youth in chapter 12. Remember thy God in the days of thy youth. And so this man, I've seen that how we can develop purpose. And that's what I want to show us. Please, I want you to open your heart to listening. The, the principles of purpose are in this scripture. And we are going to try to bring it out by the mercies of God. He said, I return. You know, he's an elderly man. He has a lot of experience. It's like, ah, now I can see. And I saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance happen it to them all. Who can tell me the seven principles of, of developing purpose in that scripture? Sister Deola? She's looking at me. Number one, I want if you are using your Bible, I want you to underline the word the race. The race. Number two is the battle. Who can tell me number three? The bread. Number four is the riches. Number five would be what? Let's see that verse. Okay, let's, I have it in the slide. Don't worry. Hallelujah. Okay, let's go to the slide. Let's go to the slide. Hallelujah. Praise God. The race, the battle, the bread, the riches, the favor, the time, and the chance. If you understand these seven things, because I am presuming we all know our purpose in life. So I'm teaching from that perspective. If you understand these seven principles, you will develop your purpose. Because of, we just have to round off the service soon. I'm, we are not going to teach on every one of them. I'm going to teach about the race. There is a race you must run. There is a race I must run. You must also know how to understand the battle. There is a battle over your destiny. There is a battle over your purpose. And the reason why there is a battle over your purpose is because of two reasons. Number one is because of the cause of the law, the devil. Number two is because of our choices. The choices we'll make can really make or mar our battle. For example, somebody that is supposed to be an evangelist to the nations of the world, and that person refused to give his life to Jesus Christ, can he become an evangelist? No. He cannot become an evangelist because of his choices. Not making and receiving Jesus into his, into his or her life disqualifies him from becoming an evangelist. So the bread... You must understand there is a principle by which you can power your purpose. The nourishment of your purpose, the riches. You also need resources. 
You need resources. And that resource is not only money. Some people are so rich. The only thing they have, are so poor. The only thing they have is money. It's not, it's not money. You need, you need riches. You also need the favor of God. You need the principle of favor. You need to understand timing. Timing. And you also need to understand chance. I wish I'm teaching on all this individually. Because every man has basically on the average four seasons of life. There's the morning stage where you are between 1 and 25 years old. There is the afternoon stage when you are 25, 26 to 50. There is the evening stage of your life when you are 51 to 69. And there is the, is it the night part of your life when you are in the departure launch of life, when you are around 70 to 100 years. In fact, you are privileged to live for 120 and that's what the Bible says in the book of Numbers that at the age of 20, you will number them because that is the anchor age of destiny. If you don't really understand this operation of life, that what you are supposed to do, some of us are already late in the season that we are. Because at the morning season, that is, in fact, but between your 0 to 25 years, you're supposed to have been born again. You're supposed to have been filled with the Holy Spirit. You're supposed to, ideally, you're supposed to have finished your career. Not every um, brother is also have finished your degree. Not everybody will really work according to that pattern, but that is the general view if you read the scripture. Can we talk about the race very quickly before we pray? Praise God. There are four things I want us to notice about the race. Number one, there is a definite beginning, and I'm going to talk on that very quickly. Every race has a definite, you need to have this understanding. That every race, your purpose has a definite beginning. And, has, and there will be difficult places. There will be difficult places. Because challenges are the breakfast of champions. Jesus Christ said, the prince of this world cometh to me and findeth nothing in me. There will be different scenery. There will be different seasons of life. And lastly, there will be a defined destination. Let, let me try to attempt to talk about the first one. Can we go to Ephesians chapter 1 very quickly? Oh Lord, thank you. Ephesians chapter 1. Multimedia, if you can give us a scripture, we can cover so much. Hallelujah. It says, blessed be the God and Father. Please, I want you to listen to me carefully. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had blessed us. The blessed is in the past tense. The first thing I want you to notice about the definite beginning is that your purpose did not begin from you. Your purpose began in God. Your purpose began in God. Say, so who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings? Now this purpose, these spiritual blessings are not in this world. They are in the heavenly places and they are domiciled in an office called the office of the Christ. Whenever you read the Bible and you see Jesus Christ, it's talking about the personality and the office. Whenever you read the scripture, you, hear, you see the word only Christ. Most times it's referring to the office. What is the difference between the person and the office? That office of the Christ became a reality after it satisfied the claims of divine justice. For example... We have uh, Daniel Smith, glory to God, is our current premier, the premier of Alberta. But there is a difference between the person, because the former premier was who? Jason Kenney. Right. There's a difference between the person and the office of the premier. If Jason Kenney gave you maybe a promise and said, okay, the government of Alberta will do this for you, and now he's no longer in power. Will the government still honor that? They will honor that because that is coming from his own office. But in the case of the Lord Jesus Christ, he doesn't, there's no election. Because it's the same yesterday, today, and forever. But that office became the platform. Because God can, cannot save us without that office. You cannot become a child of God if Jesus Christ does not fulfill the claims of divine justice. So our blessing is in heavenly places, 
is in the office of the Christ. That means if that blessing must, must find expression in your life and my life, I must bow to Jesus. I must say yes to that office. I must receive him into my life. Do Bible study on that one. Verse 4. According as by the grace of God, according as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. So your purpose does not belong, does not begin the day you were born. When were you born? September 16, 1971. That is not where your purpose began. Because the Bible says, before I knew, before I formed thee, I what? I knew thee, and I ordained thee, please stay with me, and I ordained thee to become a prophet unto the nations. So the first thing you must note is that your purpose began in God. And when your purpose began in God, the Bible used a particular term. It is called predestination. Please give me Romans. Sorry, just read all that scripture. Okay, we have it there. Okay. Oh, you can go back to that class. We also have it there before you go to that book of Romans. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go back to that. Thank you very much. Oh, glory to God. These people are very good and fast. Give me verse 4 and 3 of Ephesians chapter 1. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Um, thank you. Hallelujah. It says, it says, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy. That holy is not just referring to holiness to please God. It's holiness to be separated and without blame in love. That's number five, please. Having predestinated us. Oh, unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. So give me that book of Romans now. Now, when your purpose and my purpose began in God, it is called predestination. At that point of predestination, the devil does not have power over, your, over God's purpose in your life. Neither, neither that, or, or even your choice does not have power over that. It says, for whom he did foreknown, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So number one, there is a foreknowing. Are you with me? Oh, hallelujah. Number two, there is a predestination. Then number three, there is a calling. So the foreknowing, the predestination, the calling happened before time. Write down Titus chapter 1 verse 2 and 3. You read that yourself. Because this happened before the foundation of the world. So before you were created, before you were in your mother's womb, there is something God has specifically assigned for you. There is a portion of destiny for you and me. That one, the devil does not have hand over it. Neither does your choice. Your choice is, in fact, God did not even consult your choice before he decides to create you. It happened before time. Now, in time, there's going to be the justification. To them, he has justified. And after time, there's going to be the glorification. So our destiny began in God. Our destiny or your purpose began before time. The Bible calls it predestination. Please, let's go to the slide and let's run very quickly. Now, there are about five things I just want to share with us before we pray on how you can really actualize your race. Mind you, I said your race, because your race is not my race. Hebrew chapter 12 and verse 1, the Bible says, looking unto Jesus, looking unto Pastor Tam. Is that what the Bible says? Okay, looking unto Pastor Adeboe. It says, looking unto Jesus. So it's a continuous process. Now, give me that Hebrew chapter 12 and verse 1. I want you to notice the Bible did not say, look to Jesus. There is a difference between look to Jesus and looking, I think that should be in verse 2. It says, wherefore sin, we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. These are the people that are in glorification. They've gone before us. Let us lay aside every weight. Some of us, our challenge is not sin. Our challenge is weight. There's a difference between sin and weight. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin. Amatano, which do so easily beset us. And let us run with patience. The race 
that is set before us. So there's a race set before you. There's a race set before me. Now the secret is looking to Jesus. Is that what the Bible says? Looking unto. Looking unto means you are relying on him. Looking unto means you are trying to get, you are looking unto. You are, you are depending on him. You are leaning on him. You are looking up to him. Not just to you. It's the looking on with reference unto Jesus. Who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Is the author and the finish of our destiny. Let's go back to the slide. So one of the first things you need to actualize your race, you need clarity. Clarity. Where there is no vision, the Bible says the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Where there, what is vision? Vision is the unfolding of a divine plan. Sorry, let me close my Bible so I can be rounding off. Vision is the unfolding of a divine plan as it relates to an individual, a family, or a church. There is a divine plan for your life. And that plan is not on the streets of Calgary. The Bible says its foundation is on the holy mountains. The Lord loved the gate of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Psalm 87, verse 1 and 2. It said, Great things are spoken of thee, O city of God. It said, These and that man shall be born in her. There is something God wants you to bring forth on the earth. And that is the reason why he has already, he has, he has made the, your, your body to host your spirit and has given you a mind so that you can become a replica and you can represent God on the earth. So for you to be able to actualize your race, you need clarity. A lot of us are not clear about the plan of God for our lives. Number two thing, you need, you, need, you need concentration. You need to concentrate. Paul said, he said, this one thing I do, I press toward the mark. Forgetting all that were behind, I press toward the mark of the eye calling in Christ Jesus. I'm not teaching all this, I'm just mentioning them. Number three thing, you need continuous learning. For you to be able to develop your purpose, you need continuous learning. You must be a learner. <laughs> you must be a learner. Don't think you know everything. Even that thing you know, somebody will say it in a way that you don't know. And that is the reason why you need... Paul said, he said, until I come, bring me the books. And one of the ways we can learn these days is from the books. It's from the books. Bring me the parchment. And Paul was writing to the church. Number two, number four thing you need to be able to actualize your race, you need to have a command of discipline. A command of determination because a lot of things will want to pull you down and also a command of diligence. And lastly, you need to keep the right company. The Bible says that he that walketh with the wise shall be wise. If I can give you a suggestion, there are three people you are supposed to relate in life at all levels. Number one, you relate with people that are above you as mentors so that you can learn and draw from them. Number two, you need to relate with contemporaries, people that you can share together. And number three, you also need to relate with people that you can pour into. Every stage of your life, always make sure that is happening. Make sure there is somebody you are learning from. And sometimes you might not even have the person close to you. Thank God for podcasts. Thank God for internet. Thank God for YouTube. You can get your materials here and there so that you can add value to your purpose. I'm trusting that the Lord will help somebody. Somebody is not saying amen. I pray that God will give us grace to discover our purpose in the name of Jesus. Grace to develop your purpose is coming upon somebody. I prophesy that supernatural wisdom, supernatural wisdom and anointing is coming upon someone to deploy their purpose in God. Everywhere you are failed, you are rising up after now. I speak as one of God's representative that the blessing of the Lord will rest upon your spirit. And that which is causing a limitation in your life is broken this morning. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'd like for you to, to stand to your feet and lift up your two hands to heaven. I've said so much this morning. I want you to go back and go through the slide 
aside, go through the message, study everything one after the other. But I want you to pray and say, Father, help me to fulfill my destiny. Can you pray in tongues for two minutes, please? In the name of the Lord Jesus, I am a man and a woman of destiny. I'm receiving grace this morning. I'm receiving ability from God. I'm receiving supernatural power. Can we lift up our two hands to heaven and say, Lord, I'm depending on you. Lord, I am looking up to you. Lord, I am relying on you. Things will become clear. I receive the command of discipline, the command of diligence, the command of determination. Lord, I keep the right company bring me to strategic relationship bring me to strategic relationship somebody pray that prayer you need strategic relationship in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus bring me to men that will pour into me bring me to men that we can share together bring me to people that I can pour into in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus can you ask God for help and grace Lord I pray for this house today there will be a reviver and a rekindling in our country consciousness concerning our purpose in God. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, Lord, I decree your peace upon your people. I decree your grace upon your people. I decree your power upon your people. Please, I want you to pray against assault. Somebody need to pray against physical assault. I want you to commit your family to the hands of the Lord. Assault, robbery, assault, kidnapping, assault, assault in the church. Any form of assault will take authority over you right now. I pick that intelligence in the place of prayer. Lord has broken over your people in the name of Jesus. I decree that God preserve you. God preserve everything that consigns you. And you walk in the fullness of your destiny. Father we give you glory and praise. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Can we put our hand together for Jesus?